Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen and gamers, to another episode of Warcraft, and I am so pumped to be able to be here and do this. Today I had a quite a large video I had to load in from work, I had to do it on my personal Wi-Fi due to some things with work, and it's taken up a lot of time, and I am so excited to be able to get back to this though. And the thing that we're going to be focusing on, I believe, is when you look at this town, I want I want it to be grand. I want there to be a lot of things kind of going on. And we have the main things. We have our massive iron farm in the sky. We have the summoning circle that's going to be worked on a little bit more. Not today, though, unfortunately. I'm still gathering glowstone. We have the wizard's tower. We have the college of magic. We have the mines. We have the mayor's house. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. And in all honesty, for this village, I don't think we need a ton more to make it busy on the functional end, but the aesthetical end. And I think one of the best ways we can accomplish that is to make houses a few more like this one over here, but a lot more like this one over here, where it's very simple. And if we, like, for instance, extend this out by another five blocks, it's a different kind of house, and you're able to do something more with it. Some houses that are able to be slightly modified so they look different, but are able to take up a lot of space here basically so I'm gonna run through I'm gonna make a design or a, um, a structural house a simple structure house using what we talked about last time with palette and shape and then we're gonna move on to the next step which is well building one here and then finding out how we can modify it for the next one so I have missed you all so much and let's get this started all right guys we're back into the testing world i'm still working with pretty much only stone brick but i think this will be the house and i feel like most of you think this is a little over the top for the simple house but honestly it is pretty simple here let me show you on the inside which i haven't done anything really with this will be the staircase going up kitchen some pantry items uh, this will be a little island separating it with a cobblestone wall or something like that then you go up here you have a way to get out onto a porch master bedroom and kids bedroom nice very simple over here living room put some windows in you know make it look nice look at make it look homey and you might be thinking like, how do you do something like that well it's actually quite simple so we're gonna make a seven by seven block good that's how this started and on every face of it you have five by five on the inside every face of it do something even if it's just this you're able to break that out and ta-da it's a little bit of a different shape. You add those in, you have a weird corner on the inside. Over here. You went out by one over there, go out by two over here. Don't make it as long. Ta-da, you have a little area over there. You know what? That can be the way up. Let's put the kitchen over here this time. Go out a good amount. Why not almost the entire thing? A little kitchen. Oh, you want a pantry in here? There you go. Nice and easy. This back wall. My one rule with this is the back wall you don't always have to, but you want to? Okay, let's take it out by three. Go over and let's bring it over like that. You have a nice little cozy little spot for a couch right there. You're able to put in a single seat over here and you're able to just have it be a nice little area. Put a little coffee table in there. Ta-da! It's a small little lounge area. It's all it takes, nice and simple, we're able to use this principle throughout the Lorecraft server. So let's go! Alright guys, welcome back. So here's the exterior, nothing grand here, just pretty basic for the most part. Got a large window here, it goes right up against the wall, which is fine because I want this area to be packed. I'm trying to think of something that might go well here, but it's too wide, so I'm having a bit of a struggle, but... And we have this out here, which looks pretty nice inside. But I've left the inside completely barren. The reason for this is I think the last time we did this, except for the ladder, um, we had the stacking pictures and it showed a good idea of what I do to build the exterior but I feel like the interior wasn't shown that well so I thought I would just go down and show how I do this so first thing first is I break it off into rows living area kitchen entranceway staircase essentially staircase and once I have that broken down I figure out what I want to put in each room so an entrance way, one of the things I would put in is a coat rack. So something like this, and one of those on your side, ta-da, small coat rack. It's a very small entrance way. Honestly, I think that's all we're going to do. Kitchen, I think it needs a pantry. So 
these down here, and chests. Very simple. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Door here, chest chest. There, nice and easy. Actually, I did just realize, because we have that chest there, I would like to have access to that chest, so... I don't have stairs with me. We'll fix that later on. Pretend that doesn't look strange. Alright, that's easy enough. Moving on to the... How... Who's a what's-its? The kitchen. There we go. Nice, easy, simple. Oven. An area to work on the... Actually, you know what makes more sense to me? I've helped build and remodel a few kitchens. Normally, I believe that the sink is the closest to any working areas, so I think that would look nice. This, this, and then one of these, which probably always seems weird, but I feel like there's nothing that looks more like a faucet and a couple levers for hot and cold water than that. Then over here, let's pop the oven. A little bit away so that we're able to clean get in here and you're able to go over here work in your oven stuff like that living area if you've ever seen a basic chair that's what we're about to do so a little bit more of this some stairs plop plop Ta -da. doesn't take much honestly then if we pop up here we have a overlook here, but we don't want to fall down here. Imagine the children, which we don't have space for in this house. This is a married couple's house, kind of. Right there. Looks good. Over here, let's plop down, not an ender pearl, a crafting bench. A little small working area right before you're able to go outside. So work on a few things, come out here, chisel away at whatever you're working on, get a few th more things done. Nice and easy. Then over here, I say, hmm. Looking at our resources, I want more chests. So, there we go. Bed and bed. You know what's going on. Right here, here, and then chest, chest. So, both of them are able to get out of bed, walk around, go out the door, and start their day. And honestly, that's all I really do for when it comes to interiors. Um, I shape it a little bit to be able to ensure that it's not just hard edges and boring, but that's all it really takes to be able to do a decent interior and make it look lived in. And remember to come back later because, well, we don't want any mistakes or anything strange lying around. Also, doors, open, closed, open, closed, open. Zombies can't break in. I'm a schlub. All right, that looks good. It's nice and simple. Let's build maybe another two. Yeah, another two. All right, guys, so I'm going to take this roof here as our example. I want to just show you guys real quick what I do to be able to texture a roof. Now, you might have been able to tell that we haven't textured anything in this, these five new houses. And the reason for that is that we're going to have a little bit of a talky episode coming up fairly soon. And in that episode, we will texture and talk through and all the stuff we need to do. So don't worry, we'll take care of it, but not quite yet and I gotta figure out how to oh okay it's... I feel silly it was the one I needed to break so if we take one of those plop it there for the back something here there it adds a little bit of depth it modifies it a little bit let's take that and put something like that and that's all it really is that I go through. Go through different layers and stuff like that. Change it to oak. I'll have a few things where I will change what the shape of the spruce is. Like use a spruce slab instead. And what I'll do is I'll move that torch. First of all, I will... Where is... Is there any? Nope. Looks like I gotta make some. There we go. Nice and good. Nice and good. Make sure there's a back block for it, and that's all it is. It's very easy, very simple. I could do this forever. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a stair, turn it sideways so there's that little indent there. You know, just some basic, simple little things. One of my favorite little tricks, though, is to take a spruce block 
right on the edge and you have that little overhang on the side. I think that looks really good. Actually, I'll do that two times just right here. Also, one of your rules when it comes to texturing, yes, you shouldn't have everything too close together, but it doesn't mean you can't have anything too close together. So if you want to have a section of four or five that's all oak, go for it. Maybe they repaired it. Maybe they modified what was going on there to be able to make sure everything looked right. Anything can happen, and there's no re there's no need to try to change what did happen. Modify it, make it look good, make everything fit. I feel like this is too flat. Ta-da! And there it is, nice textured, and a little bit of variability goes a long way in a roof. Now you don't have to do it to every roof, but I think it works well. Also, that's one of the new buildings. I don't remember if I've said that. Also pretty sure I haven't introduced you to this building. It's another one in the poor district. Um, very simple. I used the 7x7 formula again, pulled out this end, and put a square over here. Here's the kitchen. You don't afford a sink. Here's the bedroom. It's all you get. It's a nice little small bachelor pad like that one is, but I feel a little bit more stylized, but also less luxurious, you know? But I like how this is looking. We've done a lot of work here, but there's something I want to work on next. I want to make a farm. And where I want to make this farm is at the secret base. Now I know a few of you might be new, you might not know what I'm talking about when I say that, but the secret base is a little incentive for you guys to download the world and go and explore. I have a secret base, it's outside of the lore, it doesn't fit in, none of it makes sense, and I love it. Don't get me wrong, I love everything here too. But it just so it's able to be a little bit buried and we're able to get some stuff done there that's hard to do in other places. Like for instance, this place doesn't deserve a slime farm, but we needed slime to be able to make the iron phoenix up at the top forgot which what it was called there so yeah it's just a fun little spot i'm gonna go there i'll have a little bit of fun we need a beacon and we're going to be making a farm so i'll catch you at the secret base all right all right guys and here's a section of the secret base we're off at the slime farm if you haven't seen this episode go check out how we get these goobity goops because honestly this was such a process it was a lot of fun but i think we did all this in an episode maybe two we just grinded it out and oh my goodness i i really like it but i figured since we have the mob farm over here i mean we are at the secret base so we're able to make it so they don't have to completely by the way it's good we don't have to try to excuse it, make an explanation for why there's spider eyes coming out of the floor. I figured we can put it over in here and this is the length and width of it and the height of it is completely expandable and we're going from this right here is Y37 down to 5. That will take a while. So to be able to add a little bit of content and be able to have this go along. I always love being able to see, especially with haste, some blocks being mined, and I figured you guys would as well. So we're going to pop it into a first person time lapse all the way down, and I hope you guys enjoy. Oh, and I thought I should let you know, while you're watching me dig all that out, I'm going to be here digging all this out. It's a good day. It's a good day for digging. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of the time-lapse, and I'll catch you...
back? Well, when we have both of these things done. All right? All right. Alright guys, and welcome back. We are down to y equals 23. We're not going all the way down to 5 because I figured instead of having it be, what, 7 minutes of time lapse for this episode, we can try to get something else minor done over here, and we can I can finish this up in between episodes and we can start work on it next time, alright? So I figured first, let's just like appreciate how many blocks I've mined out. I mean... <laughs> It's, it's kind of ridiculous, but I figured that I would take you guys back and kind of discuss with you guys what my plans are with that um, terracotta. I have to get used to calling it my terracotta and not just hardened clay. Um, and the reason why I picked that up, because I didn't just go out there and mine out there for a while for no good reason. So I thought we should talk about that and explain that a little bit and... Honestly, I thought I had a little bit more of all these resources, but that's just fine. No big deal. We didn't come here for resources. We came here to dig a hole, and that we have done. So I'm going to get a little bit more cobble going with me because, well, I want to make sure that we have cobble, like an, oh, what's it called? A shulker box of cobble with us in that ender chest because, honestly, I constantly like it's either can we all just agree that cobblestone is a late game item it's a late game item sure you have it all the time in the beginning but you never have a ton of it and then when you get to the late game you might have a ton of it but the thing is is that it's always you're always using silk touch and you never have any so i'm mined with fortune and no upgrade for a reason just to be able to get that so how's this doing by the way I crafted those up and that was at 3 and it's been maybe 15 minutes of mining since I last checked. I'd say pretty good. Off to the other area, because they're not connected. So, let's go. Alright guys, so, if you can't tell, we're upgrading our furnace right. And we are still right here at the secret base. Um, the terracotta is not very useful as it is still in its terracotta form instead of being hard terracotta or what's it called what's it called glazed terracotta i'm learning i'm learning so basically this is il mango's design i'm not using the newest one i'm using um what's the one right before he like deemed one completely perfect for use um simply because i want to be able to see if i can find possibly what isn't perfect with it and improve upon it if that makes any sense so we're going to be trying to do that and wow does shift clicking move slow i forgot how slow it actually is huh well that's just fine though no big deal and then we have another one on top and a few more and you don't have to watch all of this so you know what's going to be happening I'll do a couple check-ins. If you want to see a tutorial, just look up Il Mango Furnace Array. It'll be one of the first ones you see. All right? All right. I'm going to be honest, guys. I've realized how little I know. Il Mango is an amazing, amazing redstoner, and I have realized how little I actually know. Oh, my goodness. It's super simple to build. Honestly, you don't even have to fully watch the tutorial to understand 
what he's asking you to do. But... Oh, I want to empty these in case there's a non-smeltable. Good, well I know where to look. I feel like I just broke my own system with that. <laughs> It'll be fine. So, we're gonna throw in iron, gold, all that stuff, and watch if the rest of them all turn on at once. Let's get a good angle. Let's get a good angle. And... What? That's why not. And that explains where the rest of that redstone went that I couldn't find. There we go. Awesome. Now, the real reason why we built this was not just to be cool. While it is very cool, it's not the entire reason. I need to really work on my inventory management. I have 19 sticks in here for no good reason. Got my four pickaxes. Only one of them is even close to being usable. I want to save this for the Iron Kingdom. <laughs> and oh I think one of these is full yep there we go all right not that one so this stuff why did we go collect it why do we have it what's the purpose of it well many mob fun why aren't you lit up now you got more redstone in you Okay, good. Now, now they're lit up. I'm pretty easily confused. Just watch this. Watch. There's like almost never two in there. It's awesome. That's not the right chest. That's the right chest. That is what we're looking for. And I'll explain why. For those of you that don't know, actually I might have the redstone resources to show you this. I do. Let's make a slime block here. And a... Sticky piston. Do we have an input? We have an input. Awesome. Very, very easy then. So, I'm going to pop this here. I lied. No, I am not. Because I just remembered we are dealing with a slime block. Let's get a single block out here. Pop that up. Oh, it's power from above now. I can't wait. This should be good. Alright, plop that here, plop that there, plop here, and here. Now, if you notice, if I power this, it doesn't pull it back. If we put it on the side, let's put it on the top, and I push it, it doesn't move with it. That is very, very important. It's a slippery feature, whatever they're calling it for it. I don't understand it. understand the naming of it, but I understand how much it means for us, and I'm excited for it. Because, just to be able to save a little bit of space in there, what it means, this is good. This is good. What it means for us is that we're able to make a flying machine for a mob farm and make it so that we have a very easy block to be able to get that isn't like a furnace where these like produce lag on a server. I'm looking at a very large mob farm design that I'm making and as little lag as possible is very 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 needed. So that's what we're going to be working on in the next coming episodes but to be able to do it we need resources. Mainly red glazed terracotta, a lot of slime, which we have a ton of, and some magma blocks, which I also believe we have some, but not a ton, but those are pretty easy to get in the nether, especially since we have wings. Sometimes you just gotta be excited about your own elytra. But I I had to follow Il Mango block for block with this thing. It was crazy to build, but it makes it so that giant hole we're currently digging is going to be all worth it because we're going to be able to get the resources that we need from it to be able to do what we need to do. And I am excited. 
in the course of me talking, we've smelted this much. That just, that's crazy. I'm grabbing the rest of it. Because I don't need normal red terracotta. Oh, also, the reason why I picked red terracotta is, well, give me a quick second to be able to show you. Because I need to go outside. Alright, here's one of the reasons why I picked red. First of all, red terracotta is very prevalent in um, Mesa Plateaus, which is where I went for, to find it. I don't know if you could tell by where I was in the earlier clip. But the other reason is the other terracotta is very easy to get. You just pop some bone meal on it, and they turn into extra rose bushes. It's a weird glitch, but I like it. And I'm going to pop that right in there so I don't forget it. But it's awesome, and that's all it takes to be able to get Ooh, more. I like more. More is nice. So, yeah, guys, this was awesome. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I want to see. Oh, it's just a good feeling. And is there any more than one in these? There is. That's interesting. Okay, but it is evenly distributed. So, I'm happy with that. I believe that's what it is by when he's... Because there's a better one. I believe the better one, per se, uh, removes that feature, I guess you would say. Makes it so they're all consistently the same thing. So, I'm okay with the way it is. I'm actually quite happy with the way it is because it works. But, I will catch you guys back in a... You know what? I'll set up a birch burning here. Right in front of you guys. No reason to go off screen every single time Bill will set this up. Sometimes we just need to enjoy the moment together. And I believe I have enough resources. And die right. Port and steel. I got it all. Where do we want to go for this? Where do we want to go? You know what? Why not buy the fish farm? By the way, I got three mending books today. Like, in a two-hour session. Like, it was good. It was good. Let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's plop it here somewhere. I am really grateful to you guys to stop in, check this out. I really appreciate it anytime you guys stop by. Please share this with a friend if you think they would enjoy it. I honestly, even though it was a ton of mining today... It was all worth it, and I am so happy with where we're at in this. I am so excited for next episode because we're going to have a lot of mob drops, a lot of the things we really genuinely just do need to be able to have a very successful single-player world, and I'm really excited for it, and I hope you guys are too. I'll catch you guys back here with the next one. I can't throw this for my life, and wow. I'll catch you guys back here with the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, notification, you know all the stuffs. And I'll catch you guys back here with the next one. Alright? Alright.